Welcome artists. In this video, you're going to learn how to apply your knowledge of color theory by identifying color harmonies within works of art. If you've come this far, you should be about here by now where you are watching these instructions on the video that will soon appear. For this exercise, what you must do is find examples of monochromatic, complementary, and analogous color schemes in a work of art. And for extra credit or aspire to do, you can find examples of split complementary and triadic color schemes as well. So how are we going to do that? Let's take a look. On the next slide, it will say to find works of art, please click this link. If we click here, we'll end up in the Guggenheim collection. The Guggenheim is a very famous museum in New York, housing lots of modern art. It's one of my favorite places to find art. So you will land on this page and I want to show you up here if there's a particular artist that you like, you could search by artist. I like to go special collections and I'm going to start here in the Solomon Guggenheim founding collection. I found a picture there before that I really like. So you can see it's a lot of abstract and modern art and you're just going to scroll through until you find one that you like. All right. So I'm going to go with, let's see, I found this nice painting before. Here he is. Okay, so this is a painting by Nam Gabo called Construction in Depths. And I like the forms that I see in here and I like the colors. So I'm going to analyze the colors of this piece. So to do that, I'm going to control click or right click and do copy image. And then we need to open the next window. So we are going to create a color palette within this app called Pixlr E. So if we launch here, we will end up in this program called Pixlr. And what we want to do here is create new. So we want a square for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and select social post, which will give us a square canvas. And I'm going to say create. All right, so here's my square canvas. I can tell it's there by the little checkerboard pattern. <clears throat> and then I can paste, and that picture that I copied before will be there. So now that you can see, I can drag the handles on the corners to resize this image. <clears throat> and depending on what size um, image you select, you should end up with kind of a rectangular painting and then some room underneath. All right. So here's the fun part. Now we want to try to identify the color harmony that this artist chose for his painting. So I'm going to start selecting colors. Um, Pixlr, if you haven't used it before, is based on this idea of layers. So we can see over here in the right hand panel, it says layer one and there's our checkered board. That's just our transparent background. The next layer is the image that I just pasted in. And now I want to go down here and do create a new layer. And I'm going to go hover over the plus sign and it will give me these options. I could import an image, frame, shape, or text. And I want to create a shape. So it's giving me a square automatically. If I didn't like that, I could change up here. I can make a circle or a rounded rectangle. But a square works for me because what I want to do down here is create a color palette. So I'm going to go ahead and resize this to the space that I have left. But this gray is not what I'm interested in. What I want to do down here is create a color palette that shows me the range of colors that are within this artwork. So to do that, to change this gray to one of the colors of the artwork, I'm going to make sure this is still selected, which it is because I see the bounding, the blue bounding box around it. And I'm going to go up here to where it says fill and I'm going to click on that. All right, there's lots of interesting things we could do here, which we'll talk about more in the future. But for today, we just want to use this uh, feature called the color picker tool. So if I click on that, if I go around the canvas, you'll see that it, it the circle will highlight the color that I'm hovering over. So I want to go to one of my darker colors. I'm going to pick this kind of burgundy red, right? And I know it's in there because I just found it by using the color picker. So there's one color that I see. Now I want to go finding some more colors. I'm going to go over here, hover over, create a new shape again. So we could do it this way get another square, 
or since so I know this is kind of the size that I want, as long as this is highlighted, I could go over here and this symbol means duplicate. So I could duplicate that layer, go over here and drag it. And sure enough, now I have two red squares. But again, I don't need that same color. I want to choose a different color that I see in here. So I'm going to go up to fill, click on that, click on my color picker. And if this is in the way, you can always move this move this over select your color picker and now let's go for a brighter red i'm kind of going thinking of the color wheel right and going around so there's another color that i see in there now i'm going to do duplicate again create another copy of that square move it over let's see what other colors do i see in here now i see this kind of uh, if I'm going down the color wheel, I do see this kind of orange color also. All right, so I'm starting to get a picture of the color harmony that this artist chose. Duplicate again. Let's look for another color. I'm going to go up here, change the color, color picker. How about... This is kind of a nice golden yellow, and that looks good to me. Oops, zooming in and out here. All right, I want to duplicate this again, see what other colors I can find, and go, oops, sorry, my mouse is very sensitive. All right, and I wanted to look for this nice kind of brighter yellow here. All right. Okay, so it's important to note that when I'm picking my colors, that I want to really think about those colors that are on the color wheel. So our actual hues, right? Reds, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Those colors are our chromatic colors. I don't really want to worry about black, white, gray, and brown. Remember, those are our neutrals. And neutrals really help to tone down a color or highlight a color. But when I'm looking around the painting, I'm really just looking for these chromatic hues, which I see in this picture, right? So there is white, I see that, there is gray, there is brown, but I'm not really worried about that because those aren't colors that are on the color wheel. I really want to just identify the colors that are on the color wheel. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. I think I got a good range. I guess I could go for one more to just fill in the space here move this over and I could resize it or just let it hang off here. And let's go for this kind of really pale yellow. Uh, where'd it go? All right. Okay, so I would say that's kind of my color range here. We've gone from really pale yellow through orange to red to dark red. So if I think about, um, if I look here and I think about a gradient or sorry, the color and remember that um, we have our colors and then we have tints and shades and we have different intensities of color. So if you see me dragging this up and down, it's getting less intense as I add more black and it's getting more intense as I add less black. Or if I add more white, I get a tint of the yellow. And if I add more color or black, I get a shade of that. So I don't actually want to change it. So I'm just going to say undo. All right. So we know that we basically have yellow. We have a shade of yellow. We have orange. We have red. And we have a darker shade of red. So now here comes the fun part. Now we want to identify what is this color scheme called? So if we're thinking back to what we learned before, we had monochromatic, analogous, complementary, split complementary, and triadic. So what this exercise is asking you to do is now that you've found a painting that you like, I want you to identify which color scheme was used. So you're going to complete your canvas. We're going to export. So if we go to file export, 
you can save the page. Make sure you select the page, not just the layer, but the whole page as a PNG. I want to save that. And let's see, before I do, I just want to remember the artist name. So I might as well save it. Copy this. And when I hit File, Export, Export Page, I'm just going to name it um, after the artist and the title and hit save. All right, so in this exercise, you're gonna be filling in these slides. Remember that it said you must, you must identify, one more, monochromatic, complementary, and analogous color schemes. And then you can aspire to find these other kinds. So let's see. If I'm looking here and I see analogous means that colors are next to each other on the color wheel. Complementary means they're across from each other. Split complementary means a, a color and then the colors on either side of its complement. Triadic forms a triangle. So looking here, I'm going to find that. Uh, excuse me. All right. Looking here, if I'm looking at the color wheel, I have yellow, orange, and red. So go back, look at the color wheel. Yellow, orange, and red are next to each other on the color wheel. So I think what I've found is an analogous color scheme. All right. So I can use this as my analogous example. I'm going to go to the slide that has analogous on so now what I want to do is I want to insert the photo that I just exported. So I'm going to go insert, image, upload from computer. So another option is that you could upload your image to your Google Drive and then it will find it there, but you could upload it from your computer if you know where you saved it. So I do know where I saved it. Hopefully it is right here. There we go. I want to open and it's going to import right there. And then remember that I saved the artist's name and the title of the artwork. And let's see. I don't know why it reformatted everything, but that's fine. OK, so now we can actually read it. Great. And there we go. So we have found our analogous color scheme. They are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. I created a color palette by using the color picker to select the range of colors that I saw there. And there's that. So now I just need to find a monochromatic image and a complementary image. So I can go back to the Guggenheim collection. Um, take a look at whichever collections you like there. Find artworks that you like. This one's one of my favorites here by Francis Bacon. All right, so go look through the images until you find an example that um, can work for monochromatic, complementary, and analogous. And then again, if you want to push yourself to find split complementary and triadic, have at it. So you will upload your pictures to the slides and then submit them on Google Classroom. So I hope you have fun analyzing these works of art. You can refer back to the reference color wheel in Common Color Harmonies, and I look forward to seeing what you've learned in this unit. Good luck.